I suppose start today with um, a little bit differently because what I haven't been doing is getting any feedback from you with regard to any of the other practices and I just wanted to I suppose find out if there were any questions or any comments or any um, I don't know ideas or things you would like to add to or your experiences even that you may have had after you've been giving things a go. Yes, I've um, I've tried some of the things, but I think it is practice. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> yeah. A lot of it is practice. Um, the today's one though is will work without practice. <laughs> I think you'll <laughs> think you might be happy with this one. So that, this is one that, that I think is great. So yeah. Any other comments or thoughts or questions? Last week's one, uh, I, the, uh, it kind of reminded me a bit of what I've read about and tried a little bit of centering prayer, but but with a more specific focus. Is that I, I'm sort of on a bit of uncharted territory there, or, or or just toe in the water sort of territory. So I don't know if there's anything. Yeah, that's what Pauline yeah. was talking about last week as well. So she was right. saying how it reminded her very much, but she found that doing it in a more focused manner, she had a bit of a revelation and God worked in a, in a slightly different way through her, which was, which was good. I've spoken to her since through the week and she's, um, yeah, which, which I think was really probably, it was unexpected for her because she found it so similar to the centering prayer. But um, so she, she actually, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind me sharing this, that it, it did, because of that just slight difference, it, it actually activated some stuff that was very mm. helpful. So, yeah. mm. and, and today as well, Glenn, is a little bit similar also. So, yeah. 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 And, but, but just again with a slightly different slant. So. Yeah, yeah, sort of a slightly different purpose or, or outcome or, or something, something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, well, if, look, if there's nothing else, it's going to be very, very short today because this practice is a short practice and it's something that you can implement pretty much at, at any mm -hmm. time of the day. Um, and for me, it works really well because I have an inclination towards depression and over the years I've suffered quite intensely with bouts of depression. So depression to me was one of those things that I guess I'd been hung, banging on God's door saying, come on, you know, there's, there's got to be something. I've got to be able to, to move. I mean, I, I believe I'm not meant to feel this way for such prolonged periods of time um, without, and it, I have taken medication at times because I've needed it also. So, I was, I'd been searching for a long while for, for something within a, a prayer field that would bring me closer with the belief that I didn't think this was necessarily God's will. Now, that's not to say that this is the only um, method that's going to help anybody with if they suffer depression. And on the converse, it's not to say that it's only going to help someone with depression either. <laughs> so I'm not trying to categorise it that, that tightly, uh, but I do, I guess, want to emphasise the case. Yes, yeah, so it's, not, it's not to try and tightly categorise it, but it's just to say that there's a, there's a practical aspect to it. And it can work in lots of different ways. It works very well with anxiety, if so someone's feeling anxious. It works extremely well if you've been dumped on. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> That's my way of saying it. If someone's just done a big, you know, off unload or offload off them onto you and you can't, this is, and you, and you go, oh, you know, feeling really um, uneasy and unable to cope with, with the onslaught. It's, it's great then. So it's great in lots of really quick situations. And I think this probably has been, and as I said, I suppose in the very beginning, these are all things that have been very practical for me. I could have gone into all sorts of different other areas, but I wanted to share some of those 
things that I've discovered for me that work and they may not work for you that's not to say that they have to but at least to get my take on it so that I can I, I believe in God that I can share it so today is about breath prep you may have already investigated breath prayer and if you look at breath prayer online you'll find lots of different versions of breath prayer from things like um you, you'll get you'll get people in alternative spiritualities talking about breath prayer and you'll get people from um you know different denominations talking about it but i think the thing that we need to keep in mind and there's really no beginning for all of this my research anyhow has shown me over quite a number of years i can't find where it started and so i can only presume that it has just been with us for so long um, and also pre pre Jesus days as well. So in back way back into the Hebrew scriptures. And again, as I mentioned last week, this a lot of people can take the principle and try and apply it, but if you there are certain bits to it that if you miss them, you actually miss the whole intent of it and you miss the benefit of it too. So what I'm going to try and do today is explain the the supernatural bit to it, I suppose, the bit that is more metaphysical, that what I believe the real intention is behind it and not so much just, you know, step one, step two, step three sort of thing. Because, yeah, that's good, but you'll probably just go into a form um, and you'll be in your head with it and being in your head with it's not really for this prayer is not going to really give you any benefit the only way to go about this is you really do need to go into your spirit and you'll find that as you as you do this um on a on a um, i guess a regular basis when times hit that you you just fall into that spiritual place automatically it's not something you've got to conjure up or go and sit down for five minutes until you're in that space it's something that's just there because god's there so it's based on the principle that life is in the breath that there is i actually you know what i think i might start i've got i printed out something last night that i thought was going to be really really helpful and i don't normally just read stuff but I think I'd like to read this to you because, and I probably will send it to you. I didn't send it with the other information, but if you would like it, I'll send it to you because it's from a Richard Raw, and some of you, most of you probably know who Richard Raw is. And um, he, I, he, he talks about this and I think he expresses it very well, probably a lot better than what I can express it. So as he's a writer and I'm really not, but he talks about uh, breathing Yahweh or breathing yod heh vod heh which is Yahweh just with the initials Y-H-W-H. And he says, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of the Jewish revelation of the name of God. As we Christians spell and pronounce it, the word is Yahweh. In Hebrew, it's the sacred tetragrammaton, which is the the uh, the initials Y H V H Yod Hey Vav Hey, and I'm told that those are the only consonants in the Hebrew alphabet that are not articulated with the lips and tongue. So they're just a sort of like a, a loose type of um, way of speaking it. Rather, they are breathed with the tongue relaxed, relaxed and the lips apart. So it's sort of a, you know, a dumb look, I suppose. <laughs> you know, when someone's looking like they're vague and got, oh, it's, it's that sort of, <laughs> that's what I get, that's the visual I get. Yahweh was considered a literally unspeakable word for the Jews, and any attempt to know what they were talking about was in vain so not only was it unspeakable i'm just adding my little bit here unspeakable they didn't mean that it was not to be uttered but that it really couldn't be uttered because of the structure of the word it had to be breathed 
So because it was considered an unspeakable word for the Jews, any attempt to know what they were talking about was in vain. As the commandment said, do not utter the name of God in vain. So you can't do it. All attempts to fully think, uh, fully think God are in vain. From God's side, the divine identity was kept mysterious and unavailable to the mind. When Moses asked for the divinity's name, he received only the phrase that translates, I am who I am. This unspeakability has long been recognised, but now we know it goes even deeper. Formerly, the name of God was not, could not be spoken at all, only breathed. Many are convinced that its correct pronunciation is an attempt to replicate and intimate the very sound of inhalation and exhalation. So it's like this. And we've just anglicised it so much we've lost anything that even represents that or <laughs> seems anywhere near that. So therefore, the one thing that we do every moment of our lives is speak the name of God. That's pretty awesome. So this makes the name of God our first and last word as we enter and leave the world. And he says, I've taught this to many people in many countries, and it changes their faith and prayer lives in substantial ways. I remind people that there's no Islamic, Christian or Jewish way of breathing. There's no American, African, Australian, Asian way of breathing. There's no rich or poor, gay, straight way of breathing. The playing field is utterly leveled. It's all one and the same air. And this divine wind blows where it wills. If you look at John 3, 8, no one can control this spirit. So when considered in this way, God is suddenly as available and accessible as the very thing we do constantly breathe. Exactly as some teachers say of prayer, stay with the breath, attend to your breath, the same breath that was breathed into Adam's nostrils by Yahweh. The very breath slash spirit that Jesus handed over with trust on the cross and the breathed on us as shalom forgiveness and the spirit all at once all the same and isn't it wonderful that breath wind spirit and air are precisely nothing yet everything and that comes from the naked now and uh, pages 25 to 26 if you're wanting to to sort of look that up but as i say i'll, I'll send that on to you so hence our scriptures for today are about breath i also wanted to um oh well let's read the scriptures first psalm 150 verse 6 in the nrv says let everything that has breath praise the lord praise the lord Job 33, 4 says, the spirit of God has made me and the breath of the almighty gives me life. And Ezekiel 37, verse 9, then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O oh, breath and breathe on these slain that they may have life. So there's some very powerful breath images in our Bible, both the Old and New Testament. And I really love, and that's why I put this in, this the song, Breathe On Me, Breath of God, because to me, this just really expresses it. It's like, breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life in the air, 
that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. And you can read the rest of it there. It's all about inhaling God or having God be part of us in some sort of spiritual but conscious manner. So we're all connected through breath, whether we like it or not. We are all one through breath. We all are in that breath, in God's breath. And so therefore, that is very incarnational also, if we want to get theological. It's embodied faith. Our faith is in us. And, it, and we can we can imagine it quite easily because it's something that I guess our eyes and our visual um, imagination can, can go to. We can imagine breathing in and breathing out. It's very easy. So it's an embodied faith. And God gives us life. God gives us that life. When a child is born and suddenly they take their first breath and they go, <gasps> And often they cry, sometimes they don't. And probably all of us, I think, here have had children. I'm just <laughs> looking. So we know that, know that uh, experience. So God gives us that life. But then we are giving life to God by breathing. We're actually giving that life. So that life comes in and that life goes through and that life goes out. So we have a, a wonderful example or I guess way of both visualizing and doing and being with God. The simplest prayer that we could ever have, I guess, and for me, it's probably one of the most powerful prayers. And I needed to use it again this morning without going into detail. <clears throat> I had a, a text message from somebody that dumped on me. <laughs> and my first inclination was to do what I'm going to be showing you to do. And he gave me peace. I, I was going to say almost immediately. I'd say it gave me peace immediately. Probably not to the fullest on the first on the first breathing of it, but certainly after about three goes, I was of sound mind and emotion, and it took away that immediate stabbing hurtful feeling that I felt and I was able to go into compassion and caring where I wanted to go so the the only difficulty in, in this prayer is that we've got to do it <laughs> That's a, to remember to do it when when at, at the time that you're most likely needing it and that that to me was the challenge in, in the early stages to just literally do it. It's very simple. It's just breathing in and breathing out, inhaling and exhaling. Don't need any fancy wancy stuff to go with it. And I'm not even going to put on any music in the background today or anything. What we will, what I will probably do though is um, for your ability own ability i'll keep i'll keep you muted and i'll also get you to just mute your video though as well and that's going to, that for you will allow you the freedom to know that no one's going to be looking at you while you're doing it so you can feel more comfortable doing it in your own way whatever that might be you might i don't know bend your head down tilt your head back do whatever you want to do but you'll know no one's looking at you in in the um in the process so the, the, the process is that you just you breathe in and on the inhale, 
you're actually breathing in God's attributes or the attribute of God that you, you feel you desire at this time. Or you could also express it in the sense that that attribute might also be inside you already, but you're trying to access it with God's spirit. That's another way of viewing it. But it's a process of breathing in and very deeply and slowly. So it's breathing in. Till you reach the, the top or the maximum amount of breath that you can inhale and just holding it there for a while, not till it's uncomfortable. But then when you feel it, so as you're breathing in, you're thinking or you're imagining that attribute. So if it is peace, then you're imagining peace, the peace of God coming into you. If it is kindness, then again, you'd be imagining that. So it's the positive attribute. And then when you reach that top and you've sort of let that energy, that's, that air, that spiritual breath be part of your body, you'll start, sometimes you start to feel tingling because you, you're aware of the air or the breath doing its work in your body. Then you just exhale. And on the exhale, it's usually the negative or the opposite of what you've, you've wanted. So if it was, say, for instance, um, peace and then letting go of anger, the exhale is the letting go part. That's the canonic stuff, the letting it, letting it out, letting it just go and, and disappear and letting God just mutate it when it's out there somehow. And then, so you'll do this. I'm, I'm going to suggest you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. That just works better for me. Don't know why, it just does. If I'm breathing in through my nose and out through my nose, it doesn't seem to have the same effect. If I do the same with my mouth, in with my mouth and out with my mouth, it doesn't seem to have the same effect either. Um, try it. It might work otherwise for you. That's okay. But the idea is to bring in the breath of God, bring in that spirit of God in whatever way you can and holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it. After you feel the presence, then you let it out. Letting go of all that negativity. Now you might find, I mean, now we have, you know, psychology and everything and they tell us that just taking a deep breath works well. <laughs> I think this works a lot better myself. <laughs> a deep breath with no real purpose to it is, yeah, it's a deep breath and it's great, but um, it's not it's not mindful of what 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 who we are and receiving and embody, the embodiment of the spirit. This is this actually just is some amazing way of being able to embody the spirit. I've put down here uh, at the end of this sheet a few different ideas. You may have others, and gee, feel well, feel free to choose your own. So if some of these work, that's great. If some don't, that's fine. Uh, pick your own because this is what it's about. It's about our relationship with God and the needs that we might have at that time. And so. I'm not sure if anything is comes to mind for you, but there could be, if nothing's happened, say this morning or last night, that you feel you'd like to have God breathe on, then you might be able to think of something in the past or something that occurs quite frequently for you, whatever that might be. And if that's the case, try and bring, try and use that then and, and then you'll, begin to sense the release of the, with this practice this is i can't i can't compliment this practice highly enough but i just think every christian as soon as they become a christian should know about this because it's one of those oh that's so basic so simple so um just easy and powerful it's it's 
power of the spirit of God in us, around us, that, that does the work and changes us. It, it actually changes us. And then, the, then when you start to know about this and you go back to the Bible, you start reading things, you go, oh, okay, that's what that is meant there. That's what they that's what they're talking about. This this greater internalization of the Spirit of God living in us and being with us always. So when Jesus um, explains, you know, that the Holy Spirit will never leave us nor forsake us, I think this is just this constant awareness, this instant, instant sort of flick there and where the Okay, I'm going to unmute you for a couple of secs because I'm just going to see whether anyone has any questions. How we how we going? Does, are there any questions about what we're talking about? Or comments for that matter? You don't they don't have to be questions. I I use this. Um, well, not on the same way because I do deep breathing because I sing and that's part of the training I do when I train people in drama and singing. So I'm very conscious of breathing. Well, we do intercostal diaphragmatic breathing. So I do that a lot because of my, I've usually got quite a lot of stress going on in my life. So I do do the sit and do the deep breathing and probably not not take in like words like kindness or love but i do just sit and breathe to try and to calm mm. myself okay and so no sorry so yeah so that and that's where a lot of psychology goes now too which is which is great but imagine what's going to be like pauline when you add the spirit of god yes. to that it's yes just, it's just awesome mm. thank you that's good that's good any other? Has, it, has anybody else got anything they want to say? Okay, so we might have you all got, first of all, all got um, two words, a, a positive you want to experience from God and a, and then a negative, the opposite, the negative that you want to get rid of. Have you all just maybe sit for a little while and just pick something? Because the more, the more powerful that that is, first and foremost, is going to be, that's the really important bit that you actually find the two words before we actually start the practice. Are you all okay? Just wave to me if you are, if you've got something, okay. All right, that's great. So I'm gonna mute you all again and, um, and then what I'm going to suggest is that you all go on a video mute as well. So you know how down the bottom on mine, anyhow, it's got like a little mute button for the for the microphone and it's a, a little video key. That's it. Pat's got hers and Anne's got hers. Just click on that and you'll go to either a blank screen or a still screen. Have you got that, Narelle, or no? Don't worry if you if you have it. If you can't find it, you might choose. It's up to you. you. You may choose to just step out of the camera view just so that you can do it, or you might also choose to just stay with the camera. That's, that's up to you. I just don't want your own, the visual of yourself being there as a distraction because then it takes away from the spirit of, of God. Okay, so I'll stay here um, and I'll guide you through, say, the first couple of breaths with this. Then when I say inhale um, the spirit, you'll be inhaling the spirit of God with that, with that word or that, that consciousness of that uh, whatever it is that you're, you're wanting to receive from God. And then when I say exhale, you'll be exhaling with again the the negative or the opposite of that the thing that you're wanting god to get rid of and disperse and morph so let's just i'm just going to suggest we close our eyes 
And now just take in a really deep breath. Inhale through your nose. Fill your lungs right up to capacity and hold it right at the top of that capacity. As you're holding that spirit of God, allow yourself to feel and acknowledge the spirit working. And then through your mouth, let go. Take a normal breath. And now take another deep, deep breath, inhaling the Spirit of God. And hold it. Allowing the Spirit to do the work. And then exhale all the negative. One more time, take a normal breath. And then one more time, guided, take a nice and deep inhalation of the Spirit of God. And hold it. And allow God to work in your very being. And then exhale what it is you want to get rid of. And now just by yourself. Try that inhaling and exhaling the Spirit of God. Now bring your attention back into the room. You might like to turn back on your videos. unmuted you because I, I just um, it's a very short process as I said you could do it longer if you thought you needed to and I would suggest that if, if you do sometimes depending on circumstances we we do need to do it um, multiple times but sometimes you only need one or two breaths like that and and it just changes everything 